Now at 10, as we celebrate our nation's birthday, an ominous reality persists as Utah hits its highest daily infection rate since this pandemic began. And also on this 4th of July, family and friends remember a fallen Utah airman whose plane crashed over England last month. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC 4 News at 10 starts now. And good evening. It is great to have you with us on this 4th of July. Hopefully you're enjoying the day and we appreciate you being here with us. And we begin tonight with the all too familiar routine of Utah's latest coronavirus numbers, though today is a little different. Here's what we can report tonight. The Beehive State saw the largest spike in daily case numbers since the pandemic began. The Utah Health Department reporting 676 people tested positive for COVID-19. Now that raises our positive case total to 24,524. That is a daily rate increase of 2.6% over yesterday. Luckily, there were no new deaths reported, but 36 more people have been hospitalized with complications from the virus. That brings our current number of hospitalizations to 193 across the state. Now, as we experience the highest one-day COVID case total in the state, we wanted to know if that spike is changing people's behavior and their holiday plans. ABC 4's Nicole Newman joining us from Jordan Reservoir with that story. State health officials are fearful we will see an even bigger spike in cases after the holiday, especially since it was back during Memorial Day weekend when cases began escalating. I mean, it was a concern when we first got out here, obviously. Um, if we didn't like what we were seeing, then we would have been able to leave. Daniel Whitney and his family spent Independence Day at Jordanelle State Park in Wasatch County. But his plans weren't free of protecting his loved ones from coronavirus. Everybody seemed to be, for the most part, uh, you know, abiding by that at least six foot, minimum six foot distance, quite a bit more in most cases. ABC4 captured some people social distancing and wearing masks. However, not everyone was as vigilant. I'm not worried about COVID. It's behavior that health officials have been asking people to do heading into the holiday weekend to help prevent a big spike. We're all just trying to make our make the best out of the whole COVID social distance, but you know what is the fourth of July, so we all wanted to come out here and celebrate. On average, for the past week, the state has seen an increase of 500 or more cases per day, as well as a spike in younger people. We like adventured all the way over here, but we're from all the way across the lake. And just walking over here, you could really tell that people were nicely spaced apart. This weekend, the reservoir was a popular attraction for out of state and even people from other countries. I am here because I'm from Brazil and I come here because I really love 40 July. In my country, you don't have this day. We're from Minnesota, so we love lake life and boats and sandbars. Um, so obviously we <laughs> found this and we came here. Health officials continue to warn the public about the spike in coronavirus cases and hospitalizations. The primary goal to avoid overwhelming the health care system. In Wasatch County, Nicole Newman, ABC4 News. Nicole, thank you. Numbers across the U.S. are not faring much better as the country approaches the 3 million case mark. Right now, more than 2.8 million Americans have or have had confirmed cases of the virus. This as the death toll rises to nearly 130,000 people. Now, across the U.S., numbers continue to skyrocket in areas that we have heard all too much about. Now, this is President Trump hosted a celebration on the South Lawn of the White House. Officials enforcing mask wearing, but there was little social distancing to go around. Now, beaches that would normally be packed for the holiday were closed in California, Texas, and Florida. Nationwide death toll and the mortality rate have been on the decline. But deaths are on the rise in 14 states, and hospitalizations are up in 27, including our neighbor to the south, Arizona. In fact, the hospitalization rate is so high, many ICUs there are now nearing capacity. We will get to a point where we have to start you know, looking at those god-awful rules about who not to put into the ICU and such. But many Americans did find a way to celebrate, though some could argue not responsibly. Beaches in New York and New Jersey were packed, as you can see here, while hundreds of boaters formed an island on Minnesota's Lake Minnetonka. Now, just a reminder tonight to make sure you're doing everything you can to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. You may not think there's a reason to wear a mask. Of course, you've heard it a million times. But numerous studies have shown that the transmission rate of COVID-19 
drops dramatically when everyone wears a mask. Now, in some cases, to less than 1%. Officials keep telling us to keep telling you, please, social distance whenever you can, in public, when outside, when inside. And please, wash or sanitize your hands regularly. Doing all of these things will keep everyone, or at least help keep everyone safe. Meantime, Google launching a new feature on Google Maps to help people navigate the areas affected by the virus. The feature notifies drivers about checkpoints down the road before they cross national borders. They can also get alerts about local health restrictions on their routes. Public transportation riders can get information about mandatory face masks and other requirements. While people who are on their way to a COVID testing site, they'll also get alerts about whether they're eligible for a test. The new features are available only in some countries. Now, in the U.S., the driving and text alerts are already up and running. President Trump extending the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, Trump signed the legislation which extends the deadline for businesses to apply for loans under the federal Paycheck Protection Program. Hours before it was set to expire on June 30th, Congress passed the bill, sending it to President Trump's desk. Officials say there's $130 million of PPP loans left. The deadline to apply for the program is now August 8th. And new tonight, a local Utah bar is asking for permission to serve beer and cocktails to go, saying if lawmakers allowed it, small businesses could survive and keep employees from losing jobs during this pandemic. Quarters Arcade Bar in downtown Salt Lake City, they tweeted this morning that they would like the governor to consider giving businesses more flexibility to adapt to the current situation. They cite other states that allow to-go beer and cocktails, which they say has proven to be a positive and pro-business move. And now to the politics of this 4th of July weekend. During a 4th of July holiday weekend event in South Dakota, the president was critical of protesters that have been calling for the removal of controversial statues and other symbols. But as the protests have continued in the weeks following the death of George Floyd, one NFL team is considering a name change. There's obviously a lot going on around the country. Here's ABC's Alex Prashay now to break it down. President Trump kicked off the 4th of July weekend with an event at Mount Rushmore Friday night. Despite cases of COVID-19 increasing around the country, the audience at the amphitheater packed shoulder to shoulder, many not wearing masks. As the president prepared to take the stage, news that campaign senior advisor and top fundraising official Kimberly Guilfoyle tested positive for COVID-19. She's also dating the president's son, Donald Trump Jr. He's tested negative. Following the death of George Floyd on Memorial Day, many people across the country have been calling for police reform and an end to what they consider systemic racism. In Aurora, Colorado, protests continued this weekend seeking justice for Elijah McClain, who died after police detained him. The movement has led to a reconsideration of controversial flags, statues, and symbols. The president pushing back against those protests. This movement is openly attacking the legacies of every person on Mount Rushmore. This monument will never be desecrated. Former Vice President Joe Biden believes the president is dividing the nation. If we don't unite the country, we're in deep, 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 deep trouble. Four more years of Donald Trump will fundamentally alter the character of this nation. But this president gives us no direction and pits us against one another. We can't go on like this in the nation. And now the NFL's Washington Redskins considering a name change. The team saying, in light of recent events around our country and feedback from our community, the team will undergo a thorough review of the team's name. And developing overnight, another storied franchise announced it too will reconsider its name. The Cleveland Indians say that they'll engage the community and stakeholders to determine the best path forward for the team's name. Alex Perche, ABC News, Maryland. Meantime, protesters taking to the streets of Washington, D.C. today, where they burned a United States flag. Protesters chanted slavery, genocide, and war. America was never great. America was never brave. We're told they said all of that today. The unrest comes in the wake of a number of high-profile police killings across the country. That includes the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and in Colorado, Elijah McClain. Today, a community gathered to honor and remember a Utah airman killed in a training crash off the coast of London last month. 27-year-old fighter pilot, First Lieutenant Kenneth Allen, died in a training exercise off the coast of London on June 15th. Close friends and family called him Cage Allen. They say he was living out his childhood dream as an airman for the 48th Fighter Wing. Folks gathering today to remember him. Today's funeral taking place on the Box Elder High School football field. A new at 10, the Davis County Sheriff's Office is mourning one of their own tonight. Canine Officer Roney 
died this morning after months of battling health problems. Roney was a six-year-old German Shepherd and a five-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office at the time of his death. In a statement, Davis County Sheriff Kelly Sparks said in part, quote, our canines are integral to enforcement operations and strengthen our abilities to respond to emergencies. Roney had been struggling with medical issues for the last few months and was receiving care to address those issues. We're sad to learn of his passing and grateful to know he will no longer be in pain. And today is part of an ongoing tradition. The 419th Fighter Wing flew their F 35s over Utah. The 4th of July flyover tradition began more than 30 years ago. It's typically a part of more than 20 community celebrations, most of which were canceled this year for obvious reasons due to COVID 19. Well, what was obvious, Mr. Adam Carroll, is that we had an awesome day today. It was hot, it was sunny, and, uh, you know, there was lots of burgers and uh, brats and hot dogs being grilled, and it sounds like maybe that's uh, what we're going to look for the next week. Well, yeah, I mean, why not? Continue to uh, grill it up outside because we have absolutely no wet weather in our forecast, no stormy weather. Here's what it looks like right now in St. George. They're having their fireworks uh, out there right now. You'll Every now and then you might see one pop up here on the Southern Utah University camera network. It's 10 o'clock. That means the fireworks are up, the light is down, and it's hard to see, but there are fireworks kind of going up and around the Salt Lake Valley, at least hopefully in the non-restricted areas of the Salt Lake Valley. 82 still, though, at this hour. 94 in St. George. 77 in Price and Infernal and in Delta. Even still 71 in Evanston, but 60s across places like the eastern side of Nevada. And almost clear skies across the entire region, mainly 50s and 60s out there. A couple of 70s here along the Arizona Strip. So between now and and midnight, which is as late as you can fire them off here on July 4th. Clear skies, have fun, but be careful with those fireworks as we have one more day of fireworks, and then we're talking more about the increased fire danger coming up in the full forecast. I saw the words you did there over the screen. I saw what you're doing there. All right, thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. New tonight. An uptick in vandalism reported at Antelope Island State Park. Officials there are asking for your help. They say they've had an increase in not only graffiti, which you can see in the picture they posted online here, but other vandalism around the park as well. So if you see anything suspicious, you're asked to call the park or Davis County non-emergency dispatch. Moving on, also new tonight, police arresting this man, 51-year-old Benjamin Dillman, charged with the arson of a vacant restaurant. The fire happened on Thursday to the Scone Cutter restaurant near State Street and 2100 South in Salt Lake. Now the fire, we're told, destroyed that restaurant. Dillman now faces one count of first degree felony arson. Two fires at neighboring buildings last night, keeping Salt Lake City firefighters very busy. Just before 10, so about 24 hours ago, crews responding to a fire at the Big O Tires on 200 South Temple. When they arrived, there were two buildings on fire one a vacant commercial structure, and the other, Big O Tires. One firefighter even suffering heat exhaustion, needing treatment on scene. We know that tire fires can have lots of toxic chemicals with lots of smoke. They take a while to put out. Uh, no word yet, by the way, on how this fire started. Coming up, taking a live look right now. Hey, fireworks on the horizon. Must be 4th of July, right? We're going to take you to Provo. More on the celebratory and socially distance event coming up. Plus, we're taking a look at our downtown camera. There's fireworks popping up all over the place. It's that time of the year. But it's also time to talk more about our fire risk coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast.
Welcome back. Happy Fourth of July. I think you're looking at some live fireworks on the screen, yeah? All right, just to my, uh, just to the side of the screen here, looking at some live fireworks going on in Utah County. The fireworks being set off from inside of BYU's Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Very cool. There are no spectators allowed in or around the stadium. Still, you can look at this light show from home, and they can be able to see and watch from their homes across the Utah Valley, even from miles away, or live on your television screen here. Most holiday fireworks displays were canceled this year as a precautionary measure, of course, due to COVID-19. We're following two new fires tonight as we celebrate this 4th of July. The first and most recent start is the Eagle Fire in Utah County. Now, it's a human-caused fire, first spotted earlier this evening, burning near Eagle Mountain. Crews responding quickly to the fire were told they stopped the blaze from growing. The fire right now is about 30 acres. Crews say the fire was caused from an accidental spark of heavy machinery, and they do expect it to be 100% contained by tonight. The second fire we're tracking is the Lund Fire in Iron County. The wildfire is burning just east of Barrel. It's more than 50 acres in size. We're told that two structures are threatened. No word on how that fire started. And finally, we're continuing to follow the latest developments with the Canal Fire. It's the largest wildfire currently in our state. It's almost 77,000 acres. The fire burns just north of Oak City, is now 75% contained. More than 600 fire personnel are working the fire. They hope to have this contained by a week from today. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Adam Carroll, weather rate certified nine years in a row. Adam, I'm reading stories here, and through the ceiling, I can hear the fireworks booming outside. So it's, uh, it's a busy night out there. Well, it's funny. It's not showing up on our flag camera, so they're definitely uh, not firing off to our north. But yeah, I can hear it too, and it's all over the state right now. But the big problem moving forward here, once we get out of tomorrow, which is still another night you can fire off fireworks, is a very concerned level of fire weather in terms of heading into next week. Because we are looking at a very windy stretch of weather here across southern Utah and dry and hot, which is why we have a fire weather watch that goes into effect noon Monday through Tuesday evening, very likely going to be expanded here most of the week for a majority of the central and southern and eastern portions of our state. And that's not good, especially when you look at our drought monitor. We are in an extreme drought here just in and around uh, the Nephi area. Severe drought, much of the Wasatch Front, all the way into southeastern Utah. This is why we've had so many wildfires so far this year. But look at this time lapse here going on right now at the Cedar City Airport. Southern Utah University Camera Network shows they have a nice little fireworks show here for the crowd. You can't even see the crowd because it's so dark here on the pavement, but they're out there as I saw them kind of in before the uh, fireworks started. But 97 was our high today. We're going to be a little cooler tomorrow, but we're going to be near this, if not hotter, on Monday. 101 in St. George. You'll be hotter tomorrow. 100 in Lake Powell. It was a hot July 4th, to say the least, and we are still toasty here for this time of night at 82 in Salt Lake, 87 Wendover, also in Green River, 94 in St. George, but a nice comfy 65 in Ely. Now, infrared shows uh, not a lot going on. We do still have this pesky little storm here, pretty much out in the middle of nowhere, but it's still causing some dry lightning and maybe a, a splash here and there of some showers, especially over the higher terrain of the Tavaputs. We always want to be looking out for these storms, even if they're in non-populated areas, because they could easily spark a fire. But Futurecast shows a very quiet weather pattern heading into tomorrow and beyond. Now, it will be getting windier, though, so that'll be the, the non-quiet part of our weather forecast. As you can start seeing those southwesterly winds starting to crank up here on Monday, and we're going to keep this going here throughout re the rest of the week, especially southern Utah. 105 in St. George, 93 Salt Lake, 91 in Price. Tons of sunshine here yet again, very similar to today. Maybe a few high clouds over the uh, eastern part of the state. But look at the temperatures, 107 by Monday, very windy uh, by Tuesday. And then yet again on Thursday, a couple of different fronts. They're packing a punch with wind, but not in terms of a cooling at least St. George down. For the Wasatch Front, 98 is going to be the high by Monday. Then a little cool down again. Another cool front comes in, cools us down a couple of days, then warms us right back up again. These kind of up and down temperatures, but staying right near that 90 degree mark here for the Wasatch Front. This will heighten our fire danger as well, especially with every day being breezy, too windy. 
Ooh, I got to tell you, this is not looking good here moving forward for the next week. Well, I was just thinking about how silly it is to try to predict the future, but folks have been urged to stay at home. They're feeling cooped up, and now it's 4th of July. They've got their fireworks, and the weather looks sunny and windy. I don't know. Yeah. If you have any final words to folks, words of advice or wisdom. Well, be careful, but remember, after tomorrow, you can't fire them off. So. Okay, that's why we tapped into your wisdom. Thank right. you, sir. And now for even more wisdom, Wesley Ruff, check it in with sports. Thanks, Nick. One local team left for Orlando today. Another gets ready to go on Tuesday. We'll hear from them. And the Utah Royals play their second match of the NWSL Challenge Cup. We've got highlights and reaction when we come back with sports. Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Wesley Ruff. It's the 4th of July, and what better way to start a day than with real-life sports going on? The NWSL Challenge Cup continued today. Utah Royals coming off a 3-3 draw, looking for a victory against Sky Blue FC. Both teams taking a knee during the national anthem with the Royals wearing their Black Lives Matter t-shirt. Head coach Craig Harrington joining the kneeling. The Royals on the offensive early. Amy Rodriguez with a shot, but it heads way over it. Out into the parking lot. Okamoto gets her head on this ball, but it's just off target, misses the goal. In the 41st minute, Vero Baqueta gets the pass through to Amy Rodriguez, who fires it in with the left foot. She shoots, she scores, and then the celebration begins in front of no fans. Royals out to that one nothing lead. In the second half, goalkeeper Abby, Abby Smith hadn't had much to do during the match. She comes out, makes the save here. Back on the other end, Katie Bowen of the Royals with a pass to Vero, but her shot is off the mark. But it didn't really matter because that one goal by RSL, or by, excuse me, by the Royals held up. They win it one zip. First win under new head coach Craig Harrington. 
Yeah, delighted for the group. I think they earned that. Uh, I, think, I think the best team won today. Um, if you look from the last game, I think we're improved, which is all we're asking for of this group. And then second half, I thought there were some really outstanding individual performances. Obviously, we'll have takeaways. The hot take right now is though that we won the game, uh, is what we accomplished, and we kept a clean sheet. So all those people talking about three at the back can you know, do one, really. I think this team has a lot of spirit, a lot of fight. Um, even though we are kind of a new club this year with a lot of new players, new head coach, new system, um, we're in it for each other, and I think that shows, you know, greatly on the field. And the better performance that that we can put out there, that's just a, qu a quality of chemistry and, and willingness to fight for each other. Real Salt Lake left today for Orlando, Florida, to begin getting ready for the restart of the MLS season. RSL tried to do everything they could so they can just concentrate on soccer while they're there. You don't want to go into an environment where you're constantly thinking of something else outside of what we're really there to do is play soccer. So we want to go and focus. You know, we, we wanted to stay here as long as we possibly could because we know where, where, what our environment is. But at the same time, you know, we got to, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're ready. We're taking some precautions. I think our group has done a decent job of, of doing it. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll continue to try to, try to stay uh, healthy and safe in, in Orlando. Well, the Utah Jazz head to Orlando on Tuesday. Today, they found out their restart scrimmage schedule. The Jazz will play three games starting in just 19 days. The first game will be against Phoenix. That will take place on July 23rd, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Then two days later, the Jazz will take on the Miami Heat, 2 o'clock. And then a 3.30 start two days after that, July 27th against Brooklyn. And then the season begins for the Jazz on the 30th. And while the Jazz are in Orlando, they'll be in that Orlando bubble and expected to be isolated as much as possible. Now, it's going to be hard for the married players to be away from family, but not so much for the single guys. I'm very happy, like, spending time uh, on my own, uh, reading books, playing video games, uh, all that stuff. Like, I've been doing that my, pretty much my whole life. <laughs> you know, I don't have kids. Uh, I'm single, so you know, like it's the kind of stuff that I've been doing my whole life. I mean, I'm single, so I ain't, I'm by myself, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Quarantine life was, you know, it was kind of easy for me. I just played video games, hung out with my dog. So I kind of feel like it's going to be the same thing, just without my dog. But I think I'll be, I'll be all right. You know, other guys with families and stuff is gonna, definitely going to be tough. I think the NBA's done a, a good job putting that stuff together and, uh, Try to keep us as safe as possible and at the same time make sure we don't go crazy in there, <laughs> you know. So I'm going to, it's going to be interesting to see when we get there, how things are. But right now, to be honest, I have a better feeling about this than I had like a few weeks ago or a month ago. Gobert said they still don't have all the answers on how things will work in Orlando, but he hopes to get, some, get more answers once they arrive on Tuesday. ABC4 News, we'll be right back.
All right, a last look at weather with Adam Carroll. Adam, do you have any idea when we're going to see rain again? Uh, there's some inklings that we might see some monsoonal push here next Sunday, uh, but that's eight days from now. So we're going to stay high and dry. We're going to stay hot as well and breezy to windy to even gusty at times. So high fire danger tomorrow. It'll be a pretty similar day to today. Okay, Adam, thanks very much. Hopefully everyone out there had a safe and wonderful holiday. Happy birthday, America. Have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow at 5.